Okay, what we're going to do here is to plot some points. Now, unfortunately, we won't have to plot many single points this semester. And I'm hoping that in your linear algebra class, you did plot some points. It's hard to talk about vectors without points. Um, but meanwhile, let's just talk about uh, how we draw the axes and y. We know that when we draw normally just a coordinate plane, we usually put the positive x over there, the positive y over there, and if someone said, describe what's going on, what we want is that when you go from the positive x-axis and rotate to the positive y-axis, you go counterclockwise. In order to define counterclockwise, by the way, you need linear algebra and determinants. Um, or to define left, which is really kind of weird. Anyways, so um, normally when we draw the axes, just x and y, we do so in such a way that we go counterclockwise from positive x to positive y. When we do multivariable calculus, or physics, what we want to do is have three axes. I'm going to have three axes like this. I'm going to call that x, this is positive y, this is positive z, and we do so that to go from the positive x to the positive y is counterclockwise. And then continuing to go from positive y to positive z, we go counterclockwise, and then go from positive z to positive x we go counterclockwise again. This is consistent with something called the right-hand rule, which we're going to see a lot. And actually, you can define the right-hand rule so that it works like that. Now, a couple of names while we're at it. Uh, the plane down here is made with the x-axis and the y-axis, right? So this is called the x-y plane. This plane over here is called the y-z plane because it's made with the y-axis and the z-axis. Um, I usually refer to, by the way, the xy plane as being the bottom, the yz plane as being at the back, and over here, the xz plane. is the one I usually refer to as being over on the left. Um, I'm usually thinking I'm sitting at a desk and I'm looking at that corner over there. Um, we'll talk about this again in just a minute. Meanwhile, I want to plot a point a point that's not <laughs> zero, 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 or something quite that simple. So what I'm going to do is put my axes back and just ask myself if I had to, I'm putting positive x here, positive y here, positive z here. Um, by the way, we won't always do that. There are on occasion where this is not the best way to draw it, but we'll see. What if I just wanted to plot the point one, two, three? Well, remembering this is always done in alphabetical order, so x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3. Here is a way to do this, right? What we want to do is, starting at the origin, step 1 in the x direction, and from there, step 2 in the y direction, and from there, go 3 up. And so you can see you're at that point right there. I don't think that's the very best visual. I think we can do a better job, but to do a better job, we have to do a lot more work. Um, but let me just erase this and show you the lot more work uh, if I absolutely have to have like really maximum clarity about what's going on. So I'm gonna go like this, positive x, positive y, positive z. What I want to do is draw, um, well, it's a three-dimensional parallelogram. It's actually called parallel pipette, but we'll worry about that later on. I want this to be 1, I want this to be 2. Right. Now, by the way, this is actually a rectangle down here. And what I want to do is go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And so what I'm going to do, put a little 3 there, is draw everything up here. All right, so I'm going to go like this and this. Let's see here, this needs to come over here more like this and like this. And we see that the point, if I had drawn a really good parallel pipette, is right there. Um, now there's absolutely clarity there, which is great. Um, you can see that that's a lot of effort, uh, but we could do that every time we plot a point. Um, but please don't ask us to, to plot more than one or two points, because this is just miserable. Now, that being said, if someone said, if we're trying to think 3D and we want to think in terms of coordinates, what do we do? Well. In a non-COVID semester, what I, I ask people to do is just look at the room you're sitting in always. And this will be the front uh, corner of the room. Um, this up here right, would be the upper right-hand corner of the room. 
Um, now, how do I want to do this? What I want this to do is I want this to be the front of the room. I want this to be the right hand side. Side, right? So we're sitting here in class looking at this. And if someone said, where's the point one, two, three, what I usually like people to do is just get up and experience one, two, three, right? So you, you walk over to the corner, you walk one this way, you walk two this way, and hopefully three, um, sits about at your belt buckle while you're standing there. It works so much better to think that way, um, and we're gonna try to use that as much as possible uh, when we're actually drawing things, um, instead of trying to draw little parallel pipe heads or just enough arrows to make things work.